Besides the huge generational hardware leap that Ampere once again made with their graphics cards, one of the things that keeps an NVIDIA card in my primary PC is their commitment to software. And as you can see here with the drivers that came out yesterday, they now have DLSS in more than 100 new games. Now, I already get it, guys. Believe me, NVIDIA is not always the most popular name in PC gaming hardware and tech. I understand those sentiments. I often compare NVIDIA to a company like Nike. They are not always the most popular name as far as business or ethical concerns go. However, they are the driving force inside the footwear industry and the one that keeps bringing new tech to market. Despite what you may think of Jensen himself or NVIDIA, that is the company that's doing the same thing right now in the PC gaming space. Guys, I love making these deep dive videos where we go behind the scenes a little bit and look at some of the tech or software or hardware that's involved in PC gaming. If you enjoy these kind of videos and you're new around here, please consider hitting the subscribe button. If you're just passing through, a like is always appreciated as it greatly helps me with the YouTube algorithm. The downside to DLSS is unlike FSR, you do have to have a graphics card with CUDA cores. And that includes all the 20 series, the Touring generation from NVIDIA and all the Ampere 30 generation from NVIDIA also. If you want to get down in the mud and kind of roll around with the 16 series, they are technically GTX cards, but some people online talk about being able to activate DLSS in the config files on certain games. I'll go ahead and link this to the Linus Tech Tip forums below if you want to have a look at doing that with a 1660 Super or 1660 Ti card. Just in case you're not down with what DLSS does, it lets you render in a lower than native resolution. So maybe you're playing in 4K and perhaps you can render in 1080p using the CUDA cores on your NVIDIA GPU that will let you achieve a higher FPS. Then the tensor cores, the AI cores on the NVIDIA GPU will come back and add in more definition, more resolution, if you will, back into your picture. Keep in mind that the FSR technology from AMD works differently than DLSS does. However, the ultimate outcome is very similar and they're both going for the same thing. There have definitely been some growing pains with DLSS. Version 1.0 required thousands or up to tens of thousands of images to be individually scanned in to NVIDIA's supercomputer. That way, when the image was reconstructed using the tensor cores, the computer, the AI, if you will, knew how to upscale the resolution. However, DLSS has undergone some big jumps over the last couple of years, and now we're up to version 2.2, and that is a big step in the right direction. And now a developer can go and download the SDK directly from NVIDIA, and they can go ahead and include that in their game without going through the tedious step of downloading tens of thousands of images to NVIDIA's supercomputer. For me, one of the really interesting things about version 2.2 is that it also is going to include more quality modes. So not all of us are gonna run around with Halo or Battlefield or Call of Duty and are looking for that fast paced shooter. Sometimes you'd like to have more frames so you could use ray tracing and have that ultra detail. Although this is being reported on videocards.com, the legwork was done by Digital Foundry. And what you can see here is just the difference between 2.1 and 2.2. If you can't see it in this video, I'll go ahead and link it below because the difference is quite striking when you look at them side by side. So why are things like DLSS or FSR or XESS so important to gamers? Well, let's say you have an RTX 2070 or maybe the newer budget version, if you will, the RTX 3060 GPU. And if you're somebody that really likes to stretch your dollars, if you will, and get the maximum value out of each purchase, it will let these graphics cards age much more gracefully because it's not going to be a matter of, oh, a new generation of games comes out next year and the 2070 can't handle it anymore. What these kind of technologies will let you do is not only have a decent or too high frame rate, but they'll also let you have a good resolution involved in the process and turn up some of those in-game details. At the end of the day, super sampling technologies will let people that are playing at the top end of the spectrum, 4K right now, have a incredible experience. However, super sampling will also let people that are a little bit more budget minded enjoy their GPUs both now and for years to come without having to rush and buy the next generation. Sometimes when I talk about the software that goes along with graphics cards technology, I can watch people glaze over or lose interest right away. However, we may not have XESS or FSR if not for DLSS. Maybe those companies would have eventually had them. However, NVIDIA was first to market by a matter of several years when it comes to DLSS and super sampling technology. And while I don't agree with everything Jensen or NVIDIA do, especially these days, I do feel like this is definitely a win in their column and good for gamers at every price point. Guys, as always, a massive thanks for watching the video. And until next time, good hunting and gif out.